الله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وعظيم سلطانه وجزيل نعمائه الحمد لله حمدا يليق بكمال جماله وجلاله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق اللهم لك الحمد اللهم لك الحمد اللهم لك الحمد الحمد لله الذي جعلنا على ملة أبينا إبراهيم عليه السلام واصطفانا لنكون من أمة حبيبه وسيد المرسلين محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه أجمعين and by that fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elected and selected us to being on the path of the Millah of Ibrahim alayhi salam and to be ennobled and blessed by being of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in that context yesterday and these days we are commemorating and celebrating that very spirit the belonging to the Milla of Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam and the belonging honorably to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and we are indeed and we must be cognizant of this fact that we are commemorating and celebrating the unconditional loving surrender of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam to his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by his example we do that we commemorate and we celebrate the unconditional loving surrender of Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam to his and our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إذ قال له ربه أسلم قال أسلمت لرب العالمين Allah says about Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu والسلام his lord told him instructed him ordered him أسلم surrender yourself قال أسلمت لرب العالمين his response was indeed I have that is lovingly voluntarily surrendered my soul and my spirit and my heart and my mind and my words and my deeds and my actions and my preferences and my priorities and my hopes and my wishes all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of the worlds وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعْيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيْ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ افْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا and when they both lovingly that is surrendered فلما أسلم وتله للجبين وناديناه أيا إبراهيم 
قد صدقت الرؤيا إنا كذلك نجزي المحسنين إن هذا لا هو البلاء المبين وفديناه بذبح عظيم And so at the end says Allah Azza wa Jal surely we will award and reward those who practice ihsan those who practice beauty in the way they surrender to Allah Azza wa Jal those who give up everything every attachment every love every hate every like every dislike every attachment every connection no matter what its nature they give all of that up to connect with Allah Azza wa Jal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not and will not ask anyone creature after Ibrahim alayhi salam to offer his or her or their child in sacrifice that was for Ibrahim number two Allah Azza wa Jal did not will from the beginning as we know from the spirit of the story did not will from the beginning لم تكن مشيئته سبحانه وتعالى ولم تكن إرادته سبحانه وتعالى and it was not his intent سبحانه وتعالى that the child be slaughtered it was not from the beginning the subtle beauty in all of that was that Ibrahim alayhi salam wanted the ultimate relationship with Allah azza wa jal. Ibrahim alayhi salam was put into the fire and he perseverantly, perseverantly and patiently went through the trials. It is said that even Jibreel alayhi salam came to him at that moment when he was about to be burnt at the stakes. He said to him, do you need anything? Do you need anything from me? He replied, as from you, no. It suffices that my Lord knows. This Islam, this surrender at that level, even Allah Azza wa Jal desired for Ibrahim to be the purest of heart and to empty his heart from even even the legitimate attachments in his heart other than Allah legitimate attachments in his heart other than Allah he subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore broke his heart until the heart was emptied from everything inside of it on account of that breakage and the breakage was by trials and tribulations was by the ultimate trial to offer his only at the time son in sacrifice a son a beautiful son a loving son a muwahid son a moral and ethical spiritual son maturely intellectually mature and spiritually even more for he says to his father or Allah says to us فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِي when he reached Sa'i with him and Sa'i not only as you know in commentaries that when he was able to walk and work with his father that's very special and very powerful emotionally but nay the subtle beauty in that فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِي أَيْ السعي بقلبه وروحه مع أبيه إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى that when he reached the level of spiritual maturity by which he seeks along with his father seeking Allah سبحانه وتعالى وأن ليس للإنسان إلا ما سعى وأن سعيه سوف يرى ثم يجزاه الجزاء الأوفى this سعي the young man was already in that سعي الله أكبر beauty upon beauty and he was attached to him so strongly and then Allah says slaughter him the intent was not that he slaughters his son nobody will be asked to do that but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberated 
Ibrahim through that trial from any, any, any at his level, nafsani relics inside of him. Nothing else except Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why when Falamma Aslama emphasized that, when they both surrendered themselves to Allah Azza wa Jal, when inside of them, khalas, it's done, everything is removed, and they gave up everything, every love, every hate, every attachment, every connection, the father, his son, the beautiful son, and the son, his life, and his father. And then when that happened, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا internally, when there was no nafs left internally, when the nafs internally was defeated ultimately and completely, metaphorically, when the nafs was slaughtered. قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا When that happened, then Allah says, you have fulfilled the vision and the command. That was the intent. The real sacrificial cattle or animal we offer in sacrifice these days, the intent is that the real sacrificial cattle and animal we offer these days is the animal inside of us. My nafs. Your nafs. That we slaughter. Bismillah. Wallahu Akbar. By Allah and by Allah's permission and by Allah's leave and Allah is greater than me, than my nafs, than my power, than my abilities. Nothing is left. When I and you perform that act in my soul and yours in my heart and yours it is not the animal you are slaughtering this poor innocent animal that we are making a commitment we are making an oath we are making a ahd we are renewing our allegiance to Allah and Allah alone by ultimately even ultimately Defeating and conquering the nafs, the base nafs, the low nafs, the evil nafs inside of us. That's the commitment we are making. Ibrahim alayhi salam and the son alayhi salam, whether it were, it were Ismail alayhi salam or Ishaq alayhi salam, it does not matter. What matters is that the spirit of those actions when they insistently and patiently and painfully and bitterly fought the drives inside of themselves at their level, at their prophetic level, when they fought what was remaining of nafs, then Allah gave them that which he gave no one else. And thus he said, Allah, if you do the same, if you slaughter your nafs for me, your ego, your evil inside of you, your arrogance, your delusions, your ostentations, your hates, your criminality, your lowliness, when you slaughter all of that for me, that nafs, the love for leadership, the jealousy, the envy, the ignorance, the types of shirk. When you remove that from your heart, from your nafs, for me, inna kadhalika najzil muhsineen. So verily, I shall reward you as I rewarded Ibrahim and his son, alayhim as salam. Inna kadhalika najzi al muhsineen. My dear brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam when a man asked him mal islam ya rasulullah 
what is islam islam this islam falamma aslama wa tallahu lil jabin this islam qala if qala lahu rabbuhu aslim qala aslamtu li rabbil alamin this islam when he was asked sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam he replied al islam an yuslima qalbuka lillahi ta'ala al islam an yuslima qalbuka lillahi ta'ala islam said he sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam is when your heart that is your emotions your emotional drives not only your external words or your academic and intellectual preferences and assessments but when your emotional drives when your qalb when that which is deep inside of you that stirs your emotions that moves you to love or to hate to desire or not to desire when those emotions inside of your qalb are completely and lovingly in surrender to Allah azza wa jalla that in your qalb in our qulub Allah does not find us inside of our qulub in a condition in a hal in a state where he does not love us to be and la yajid qalbi subhanahu wa ta'ala haythu la yarda li haythu nahani that he doesn't find me inside of me harboring or entertaining feelings and emotions and drives which he does not love and la yajid qalbi haythu naha qalbi an yakun an yuslim qalbuk i repeat that allah azza wa jalla does not find my heart in a state of emotion in a state of awareness which he or lack of awareness which he does not love subhanahu wa ta'ala which he forbade me to entertain he does not find me in a state of inside of me of kibr of arrogance he does not find me in a state of ghurur of delusion inside of me oh and human beings powerful and not powerful scholars and not so scholars could be riddled with kibr with arrogance and delusion and ghurur and love for leadership and riya and ostentation and envy violent envy hasad and lack of contentment qillatul qana'a and lack of haya lack of bashfulness wa hakadha ahwalul qulubi adidatun la tuhsa that he subhanahu wa ta'ala does not find my qalb in that condition and yuslima qalbuka lillahi ta'ala lillahi ta'ala lillahi ta'ala fi as-sara'i wa fi ad-dara in moments of prosperity and ease and satisfaction and in moments of dissatisfaction and displeasure and pain and discontent and adversity and hardship and la yajid qalbi haythu nahani wa an la yafqid qalbi haythu amarani and that also he does not miss my qalb to be in a state of emotions in a state of feelings that he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from me loves from me he must not miss my heart always from being humble from being kind from being forgiving from being just from being benevolent from being unpretentious from being loving from being compassionate from being strong from being brave from being hospitable from being generous wahaluma jarra he must not miss my qalb in that condition and instead like physically he must not see me azza wa jalla hanging out 
or surfing around in environments and in places that are improper. And so my heart is well. And he must not always miss me from being where he loves in a masjid, in a beautiful house of Allah Azza wa Jal, with the needy, with the poor, with the one who is less fortunate. He must not miss me there either. And yuslima qalbuka lillahi ta'ala. And consequently, this Islam, wa an yaslama nasu aw al muslimuna min lisanika wa yadik. Wa an yaslama nasu aw al muslimuna khassatan min lisanika wa yadik. Said he sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahibi wa sallam about that Islam. And consequently, when the qalb is in that condition of Islam, then the senses and the limbs and therefore our tasarrufat, our behavior, our conduct is according to that. So he said, and that people, human beings, people, creatures I would say in general and in particular believing men and women and the Muslims in particular are secure and safe from your tongue and your might, and your hand, and your power, that is. Muslim, that Muslim, is the one, consequently, of that Islam in his qalb, that the world is safe from his tongue, or her tongue, and from his or her hand, that is his or her might, and power, and resources, and power to inflict injury, and pain, and power to even do justice. When we have the power to do justice, oftentimes as human beings we abuse that power. And our justice and our quest of justice becomes unjust itself. وَأَنْ يَسْلَمَ النَّاسُ مِنْ لِسَانِكَ وَيَتِكَ At home, the family towards one another, man towards women, woman, and woman towards man, and towards household, they're safe from the tongue, the abusive tongue at home, the abusive tongue at work, the abusive tongue in the masajid, the abusive tongue in prosperity or in adversity, when we are pleased or displeased, as you know, my dear brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that all the sons of a munafiq is an abusive tongue when he or she disagrees with others. Ayatul munafiqi, thalat wa fi riwayatin arba' minha idha khasama fajr. And one of those characteristics of a munafiq is when he quarrels, when he disagrees, he or she or they, they are abusive in their words, in the use of their tongues. They are abusive, they are excessive. وَإِذَا خَاسَمَ fajr, fajr explodes with lack of fairness. And he explodes with قُبْحِ My dear brothers, and sisters, and يسلم المسلمون وأن يسلم الناس my dear brothers and sisters from my tongue, from our tongues that's a Muslim that's من حقيقة الإسلام that's of the reality of the essential reality of being a Muslim if I say لا إله إلا الله محمد الرسول الله والحمد لله even from my heart when I say it but my tongue is ruthless and rude, my tongue, then I am not that Muslim. I am not that Muslim. I'm a mediocre Muslim, the most you can say. وَأَنْ يَسْلَمَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنْ لِسَانِكَ وَيَدِكْ يَدِكْ Hand literally, but it means everything that hand stands for of meaning. Power resources, abilities, control, all of that. Power, economic, financial, social, psychological, emotional, military, political, all of that. If 
your neighbors, if your family, whoever you are, whatever individual you are, or group you are, or nation you are, if the world does not feel safe, if at home they don't feel safe, if the neighbors don't feel safe, if the one who agrees with you or disagrees with you doesn't feel safe from your might, from your hand, from your power, then you're not that Muslim. You're not that Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa even said, وَأَحْسِنْ إِلَىٰ جَارِكَ تَكُنْ مُؤْمِنًا وَأَحِبَّ لِلنَّاسِ مَا تُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِكَ تَكُنْ Muslima, in that hadith sahih also, he mentions Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, be benevolent and kind and especially good to your neighbor, you shall become a mu'min. And love for the world, for others, that which you love for yourself, you shall become that Muslim. My dear brothers and sisters, these are reminders to myself first and then to you. On the occasion of these blessed days of Eid, these days when we must not forget that these days are not only about eating, alhamdulillah, and drinking and being joyous and happy in the legitimate worldly sense, but the essence of that, we are commemorating and celebrating the loving surrender that Islam of Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wassalam to Allah as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa lived that and showed that to us by example and ordered us to follow that for he and his sunnah is the millah of Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wassalam أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه طوبى للمستغفرين Seek the forgiveness of Allah عز وجل What an excellent abode awaits those who sincerely seek forgiveness from Allah عز وجل استغفر الله العظيم واتوب إليه الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله على عباده الذين اصطفى اللهم صلم وسل صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد عبدك ونبيك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وذريته وأهل بيته أجمعين كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وآل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد صلاة طيبة مباركة زاكية نامية دائمة بدوامك لا تنقطع أبدا ولا تفنى صرمدا ولا تنحصر عددا ولا تنقص مددا صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والآفات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين صلاة هي منك عليه أشرف الصلاة وأكرمها وأطيبها وأزكاها يا رب يا رحيم الله مرحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وآمن روعاتنا واستر عوراتنا وأصلح ذات بيننا وطهر قلوبنا وأحينا حياة من تحب بقاءه وتوفنا وفاة من تحب لقاءه اللهم اختم لنا بالسعادة اللهم اختم لنا بالسعادة اللهم ثبت 
فتنة اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا هادين مهديين غير ضالين ولا مضلين لا مبدلين ولا مغيرين على ملة أبينا إبراهيم وعلى سنة سيد المرسلين محمد عبدك وحبيبك صلى الله عليه وآله والمرسلين جميعا يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم قوموا إلى صلاتكم